everyone. I am the founder of Fantasy Magazine, Zaire Smiles, and we are here today at Magic 106.9 with Elise Stewart. So we're about to get into this interview right now. So make sure that you tune in, tap in with us right now. We're about to get into it. So without further ado, here's Elise Stewart we're about to get into this interview question. So make sure that you pay close attention and sit back, relax, and we're about to go. So when did you, or how did you become a radio host? Like, what made you want to do that? Well, I know a lot of times when kids are small, they'll call out certain things that they want to do. Mm -hmm. Ra radio was not something that was on my mind. Um, I reached the 12th grade in high school, didn't have a game plan. I knew I wanted to be an actress, didn't have a game plan. Mm -hmm. So the guidance counselor called my mom in, like, what is she going to do? Right. Like, she needs, she needs something. So I applied to uh, college. I didn't want to go to college. St. Augustine's <laughs> College. And yeah. they said, hey, come on, we got room for you. Um, I didn't go to class a lot. I didn't graduate. Let me just say that. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I got there, I went looking for the drama department because I said, well, you know what? I can prepare myself for this acting that I want to do and that eventual move to New York or L.A. So I went to where I thought the uh, drama department would be. There was none. So I left the building. I'm like, okay, what now? I'm walking on this on this campus and I walk past a radio station. I can't remember the call that is right now. They're going to be upset with me. So I walked in and I just said, can I have a tour? Mm -hmm. And there's this uh, news journalist out of Raleigh, Eric Curry. He asked me if I wanted a tour. I said, yes. And did the little walkthrough and he allowed me to also do what they called a weather capsule back mm -hmm. then was like 20 seconds, you saying, hey, it's gonna be sunny today, blah, blah, blah. All day, my voice was on the radio. I'm hearing myself do the weather. <laughs> I'm like, hey, yeah. I like this. Yeah. So that kind of sparked my in uh, interest. And I don't believe that we are just in this world and we plan everything and that's how it flows. I think some things are kind of predestined. A lot of people aren't into that. But when I look at how I fell into radio, it is. So I had that chance moment wasn't doing good in school. So I transferred to Shaw University to try and leave some okay. of the Fs behind. <laughs> and when I got over there, they did have a radio station that was geared towards students being on the air. Mm -hmm. So I did that. I was in the communications department, Foxy 107, 104 out of Raleigh, came in looking for part-time talent. I oh, believe wow. I was the only one to put together a reel and submit it. Terrible it was. <laughs> and I got the job. And that's how I, I fell into radio. Um, Foxy didn't give me the job. I kept oh, calling man. and calling. Y'all ain't like me in the interview. <laughs> like, what's going on? So I said, and defiant. I've always been defiant since I came into this world. Um, I called to uh, K97.5 in Raleigh. Cy mm -hmm. Young was the program director. Pulled me in for an interview. Gave me the job on a Tuesday. Foxy called on Wednesday to say, you got the job. I said, no, I'm going to go with the biggest station. And that's how it all started. Okay, that's yeah. very interesting. I'm glad you shared that with us. Yeah. So do you consider yourself to be to be an influencer here in Fayetteville? I don't typically think about myself like that, mm -hmm. but I do know from when I meet people and I call them family in the streets that I do have influence on people. Okay. Um, when I'm on the radio, I choose to go a transparent route. I'm not like an announcer. Hey, this is going to be going down, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I, I do drop a lot of myself into what I do. Um, and and I, I'll do something personal. Like, and I, I want to talk about this because I want other people to feel free to talk about it. Yeah, for sure. um, I was molested when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. And every now and again, I'll talk about that on the radio station, particularly if there's something in the news. There's always something in the news where a woman or a child has been violated, in particular, people of color. Our family don't put that dirt in the street, that type of thing. So I put my dirt in the street so that I can be an influencer on that page and empower people to say, hey, this happened to me. It's not my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. So I'm starting to feel a little emotional right yeah, now, okay. but I, I think I influence people that way through my personal journey, my, my personal story. So that's what's important to me, not uh, whether or not I have the latest fashions, because I don't, I don't, I don't know what's hot right now. I'll go and buy what I like. If that influences someone, that's okay. But that's from an influence standpoint, that's what's not important to me. Okay. It's, it's making people feel stronger in their skin. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I feel like I influence it from that, from that angle. Okay. So what is a typical day for you like here? Like what, well, what would you say? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Uh, my first five jobs, and let me stop. Um, <laughs> 
The obvious thing is I am a radio host. I'm on the air weekdays, 10 a.m. to 3. I'm also the station's program director, and that pretty much means the person that selects the music that's played on the radio. If someone has a community announcement, I review it and make sure it truly is a, a community event and not someone trying to throw a party on the side. Right, right. Um, so anything that's flowing through the speakers, that falls on me. So that does entail a lot of conversation with my peers as well, like the promotions department. People reach out to us and they want to do contests or have us on site. So I meet with them. Um, there's conversations all the time to determine if that's a good fit for the station and if what we do and what we provide will also benefit the person that's reaching out to us. So um, my day uh, in includes a lot of stuff like that. Just what sounds like small decisions behind the scenes, it really is something big because it's what's gonna come through the radio station and it's our brand. It, it speaks as to who the station is and what the station is. So that really is the bulk of my day and probably at the end of the day, the most important thing. The, the, the radio side is fun, but then there's the other stuff that keeps the wheels of the station rolling or the needle on the record spinning, yeah. you know? Uh -huh. yeah. Sounds interesting, sounds like a lot, but I know that you keep maintaining it every day, but. Oh yeah, no yeah, doubt. It sounds like a like a good bunch. Like, I don't, I'm not sure if I can handle it, but. You, you yeah. could, um, <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, um, I have been in radio since 1990. And I worked in Charlotte for, I guess I'm going to say nearly eight years. And I think it was 2008 where we had like the market to crash, mm -hmm. crash. People were getting houses and stuff that they couldn't afford, the mortgages and stuff. So I was a part of that whole layoff thing. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it was like when I was pregnant too. I went out on maternity leave, came back. I want to say 28 days later, I didn't have a job. I will say that anything is possible because I never set out. Um, to be a radio host. I never set out to be in charge of a radio station. When I saw this job listed, it was after I'd been laid off. Um, I was pregnant at the time. Um, and some time passed and it just didn't just like click, click, click. Right. <laughs> so when I'm checking the trades and looking for work, I saw a position posted for this company, Cumulus Media, um, and it was assistant program director. I didn't have any experience in that. And I was like, I ain't gonna fly. So I went on about my day and something told me just go back and apply anyway. Um, and I did. And after I, I sent it off, uh, I reached out to someone that would be known as the, the big man over programming. I said, listen, I sent you my package. I want you to take a little look, see at it. And I think it was that call that got me in the door because that prompted him to call here, to Fayetteville, to the person in charge here. Right. And I'm telling you, this thing just unfolded. That's why I believe in destiny. It's like my, my things kind of click, click for me. Um, I ended up down here and it was the way they were treating me during the interview. I said, oh, I got this. <laughs> so that was my first, this is my first programming job. Okay. I learned from the bottom up. Yeah. I'm not gonna say it wasn't stressful. Right. And it was many a time. And I had, within the three weeks that I was in my hotel, I was like, I should just go to Owen Drive and get my stuff mm -hmm. and go on home. Yeah. But uh, here I am nearly nine years later. Yeah. So anything is possible. Yeah, glad you stuck with it. Oh, yeah. That says a lot. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Tell us about the recent event you hosted this past Juneteenth and what motivated you to do it. Well, Fayetteville is a small town, but, you know, um, it does have its own vibe. Mm -hmm. It needs a little more. So it that's kind of like it what does. got me thinking about Juneteenth. Um, we shouldn't have to travel down the road to Durham, to Raleigh, to Charlotte, when we can do those same things in our town. That's just kind of like what it was. Mm -hmm. um, I know on a smaller scale, people have been approaching Juneteenth, but being that I do work for a radio station, obviously our platform can be utilized to, to really do something big. Right. And, and that's how it unfolded. I just wanted Fayetteville to have its own Juneteenth celebration. And because I do gospel already on the radio station, um, it just all unfolded so nice. Uh, having the inspiration there and my goodness, people out there crying and everything. I right, cried. Yeah. I, I'm so glad and thankful to everyone experience. that came yeah. out and supported it. I, I just couldn't have imagined what unfolded out there that day. So yeah, that's why, because Fayetteville has the power and our people have the love of good things too. So that was really the reason I wanted to do it. Why not? 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had a chance to actually go out there and experience it for ourselves, and it was by far like one of the best experiences here in Fayetteville that I actually have um, been a part of or went to. So, um, thank you for actually um, hosting that, having that here. You know what I, I really like is how people um, have expressed when they walked into the park, mm -hmm. they could feel the energy yes. of what was Immediate. going on. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and I want to shout out one guy that was there. I don't know his name, but I had come down off the stage and I guess I can call it the pit. Right. And I don't know what this man has gone through in his life, but I know it must be something, something serious, something that was heavy because you can just see it on him. And he was crying and I guess Donnie, I Donnie think McClurkin I remember, yes, I remember that. came down yeah. and, and I guess prayed for him out there on site. He, mm -hmm. and he ended up. And I'm not like really a church person, but he ended up being on the ground and, and whatnot. And then he just took me someplace. My tears are, are flowing. I looked up on stage. I saw some of my coworkers, their tears are flowing. Whew. Nothing like that. Yeah, I, I haven't experienced anything like that here in Bedville. Yeah. Looking forward to, to round two. Yeah, it was definitely needed. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. So, and that brother, I hope he's uh, on a good page. Oh yeah, I yeah. hope so. <laughs> So are there any organizations or agencies you like to shout out that you work with? Um, one in particular, and this is one of my personal stories again, um, Light Up Fayetteville Pink, uh, Gladys Hill. She's a woman that has experienced um, breast cancer, the scare, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm a woman of that age. I went in for a mammogram here. I think my, my first series of them started here in Fayetteville. And my information wasn't de delivered properly. I went for testing on a Monday. And then I got a call on Wednesday from the lab saying that I needed to come back. I said, he must be mistaken. I had already gone in. So between my doctor's office, and it wasn't the lab, it was my doctor's office. And I switched from them. And I was supporting them because they were black owned. Right. I make a point to do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to say, I don't feel like they showed me love. They didn't treat me the way I should have been treated as a patient, as a person. And I communicated this. So I'm not talking behind the back. Mm -hmm. um, so I was scared all week, you know, waiting for my next appointment. And I talked about it on the radio and Gladys reached out to me and basically embraced me through the phone and eventually in person. And she has taken it upon herself to reach out to me and remind me, hey, it's, it's about time for you to go for your checkup the whole nine. And I went through the same thing again uh, this year, believe it or not. I, I remained with that doctor's office and I said enough is enough. But I do encourage uh, people to look her up, Light Up Fayetteville Pink, because she sells these pink light bulbs and the monies that she raises, she donates that, Cape Fear Valley Hospital, so that women that can't afford mammograms and things of that nature can get that done. And it, it can be expensive. I have insurance and I still, my mouth fell open because I had to go back for the additional testing and probably will for the rest of my life. Black women, we just have a different thing going on with our tissue. Mm -hmm. And as I say on the radio, Google that. <laughs> yeah. So what job would you want to do if you're not in radio any longer? Let me see. Anna Nicole Smith married this old guy, right? No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I don't, writing is a passion for me. I don't think any other job is going to make me happy, so I better get my book done. I announced in the second grade that I was going to write a book, so that's something that's like over my head. Mm -hmm. um, I've tried working outside of radio uh, in between the times where I quit or there was some kind of layoff. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of places, I don't know why companies do it, the walls are always gray. Gray walls make me sleep. <laughs> so I tend to sleep on those jobs. And I remember I was leaving my light on, uh, this insurance company I was working at, my jacket on the back seat, because I would get to work late. I just didn't like it there. Mm -hmm. Came to work, they had moved my cubicle to the front aisles. Right. They were on to me and eventually they let me go. But if I could write and travel in support of my creation, that would make me happy. And I can't really think of anything else that I would want to do. Okay. Being my son's mom is a job. Um, so that job I keep and I accept that, but yeah, I think I like working with the public from that standpoint. So I don't think I would be happy behind a desk. Yeah, well, yeah. You definitely chose the right thing. Yeah. yeah. Just stick with it. I'm pretty sure you would. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling inspired. Yeah, it seems Especially like, since I'm putting it out here. <laughs> yeah, it seems rewarding already. Oh yeah. Like so far. Yeah. 
Can I tell you? I'm going to tell you, oh, yeah, you can. one more destiny story. <laughs> My brother was murdered. And this is going to sound weird. Mm -hmm. And I, I, maybe I'll put this in a book one day. My dad is. My dad was married twice. My mom was his uh, first wife. Mm -hmm. She gave him two children. And then I had three brothers and a sister from my, my, my father and his, and his wife. Um, three of them murdered, believe it or not. Um, the child that my mom had, he chose to, to sell drugs. Mm -hmm. There was a setup. They called him to the park, he was murdered. And it really affected me. And I kept waking up around the same time, like 3 a.m. So I said, let me just grab some paper. And I thought I was writing my story and I was gonna send it to the black newspaper in town. I was living in Winston then. But I didn't, I sent it to the regular paper and they, they printed it. So I was like, wow, well maybe I should send it to Essence. Mm -hmm. So I made it um, a little longer and I sent it off to Essence Magazine. That's when Susan Taylor was in place. And dang on the Essence wrote me back saying they wanted to use my story. Oh, wow. But then life gave a little funny little twist. Susan, you know, eventually she left there. Heads changed and all of that. My story never got published. But I still have the letter saying that they thought my, my writing was worthy. But that right there was also the ding, 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 girl, when you're going to write your book. So I have like all those little moments in my life. I'm over here in therapy right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I, I really do need to go home tonight and do something. Because I keep getting my little signals and mm -hmm. talking to you right now. It's me yeah. kind of like. All it does is take that one step and that one step is right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I got to get refocused. Definitely. This, this is helping me right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is your perspective on the power of media and voices here in Bay and City? <sighs> From a personal standpoint, um, the power of media. I, I love being on the radio because I have the opportunity every day to be an influence or to touch someone's life and maybe change the course of their lives. Um, a lot of times um, I'm on the air and I'm talking about, hey, how's that New Year's resolution going? Just a little mm -hmm. reminder. And if you drop the ball, this is your opportunity to start again. Every day can be your day one. It's mm -hmm. a chance to kind of like reset. It is. So for me, that's the power of media, uh, again, empowering people to do the things that they know they should be doing or to open themselves up to more opportunities. And, and the way I look at it too, um, and I talk about dreaming and embracing that. I use media for that. We check into our jobs. The checks may be good, may not be good. But you think about the CEO of that company, the managers in that office, that's their dream. You're just checking in to help them keep their dream flowing. But what about you? So that's what media is for me. That's how I've chosen to use it. And I don't know if I at any point in my life said, this is how I'm gonna utilize this platform. I didn't even know I was gonna be in radio or that I wanted to be a radio host, but this is how I'm being used uh, with, with this platform. So media is powerful that way. I don't think it should be all about um, the glam glam and, and just the things that don't really matter at the end of the day, you know? Mm -hmm and talking about people. I do celebrity news. Right, right. I do it because people want it, but I, I'm not going to do the ugly stuff. Stuff that I know is malicious. I can't validate that it's true. There's no point to, to feeding that out there into the community. I know people want it, so I have to do it as a part of my job. But there's more to media. We can make a difference in somebody's life. Right. Like, literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So what's the worst interview you have ever experienced? Um, I'm gonna say Sunshine Anderson, and I like her song. I like Sunshine Anderson, mm -hmm. but many years back, she had the opportunity to be on Steve Harvey's morning show before he was Steve Harvey, the syndicated man. And I don't know what happened in her life or what happened that caused her to turn the interview down, but he never forgot it. So he was in Charlotte during the CIAA, okay. uh, doing yeah. the show live. Um, I think it was called the fan experience. That portion of it is free. Mm -hmm. She was there and she wanted to go on the show. Why not? He's on all these radio stations. Steve was like, no. Nope. It changed her energy. And I had to interview this lady. Ooh. I'm the local jock. Sure. Of course she wants to be on with Steve. Mm -hmm. So like literally I'm facing her 
And this is her body. You and me, and I'm Sunshine. Talking to me like this. Wow. And I was just like, and I had been told in radio, um, the celebrities are not better than me. Um, they're just people like me. Don't ever allow them to mistreat you. Mm -hmm. That's what I learned, you know, once I came in the radio. So I just kept on being me. And I think she eventually relaxed. But it still bothers me to that day that she did that to me. Yeah. You know, I'm just as important as Steve Harvey. I don't have the same large platform, but my voice is just as powerful too. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna say she's a tie with Faison Love. He was gonna come here and perform, do a comedy show. And I looked on Wikipedia, cause you know how they'll be like, such and such died. And yeah, they yeah. send everybody into an uproar. Mm -hmm. It was out there about Sinbad and someone did it about him. Yeah. So I mentioned it earlier on, like, and I, it was about two minutes. Uh, just to kind of like <laughs> relax, get a little laugh, kind of get us a little bond. There was somebody in the room. He was like, man, she wishing death on me. I put him in the wrong place mm. by mentioning that. And he started going into something about well, if you believe that, you believe anything. And he got a bridge that, that's for sale. I said, well, how much is it? Click. <laughs> it was a phone interview. He hung up on me. Oh, wow. So that was it. <laughs> And I blocked Faison Love wow, on social media. Crazy. He don't know it, but I'm done with him. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. a crazy story. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been attracted to or disliked someone right away in the interview setting? Um, I don't know if I've ever liked someone or disliked someone right away. I have felt that I don't really like a person. So mm -hmm. I, I won't call out their names. I will say this. One rapper back in the day, that's when I was in hip hop radio, and that's when gold fronts were popping. Mm -hmm. He had terrible <laughs> breath. I just couldn't even hardly concentrate on the interview. <laughs> it was first thing in the morning. I was like, why are people wearing these things? So mm -hmm. I ain't like him in the moment. Yeah. I won't say <laughs> who it was. Um, in terms of a, attraction, I like all flavors of men. I like I like mm -hmm. a little bit of everything. So yeah, people have come into the, the studio that I, I find uh, attractive. I haven't like really like went there with anybody. <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't initially, but eventually, yeah. Um, Darrell Babs, AKA Single Tank, because my son is Darrell Jr. That's why when I'm on the radio, I'm like, I'm Elise Stewart, Darrell Jr.'s mom. Mm -hmm. He is his, he is his uh, father. Um, we kind of clicked. And I remember like the number exchange. I remember when I got the first call, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm kind of <laughs> pumped. And the funny thing is, I won't say this is a destiny thing, but I'd gone to a play. He was in it. Uh, I don't remember everybody, but he was walking through the hallway with his people and I was standing with my people. And I know we made eye contact for a second, didn't mean anything. And then they were at the radio station the very next day. So that's how our conversations uh, kind of started. And, and I want to say of that situation, that is my story. Some people have tried to make it theirs and tried to rewrite it for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, that's your story. Social media can be <laughs> a good thing and it can be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of fell out one time off social media and mm -hmm. it, it carried over onto line as it does with a lot of people. And it's just not a good thing because mm -hmm. it remains there forever. Yes. And I'm gonna say more than 14 years ago, people still, well, are you still mad at him? Are you like, does that make any sense to you? That's my child's father. I'm gonna do what's best for my child, which is to have good communication with him and um so i'm just kind of disappointed when people approach me from that aspect and i'm just going to say officially that is my story and what you think you know you don't know mm -hmm. you know what i tell you so if you approach me and and say i want to talk to you about it i may be open to it but i don't even have to do that right so i think thank you for giving me the opportunity just to go on record with this just because it's in print even Wendy Williams talked about me when I was pregnant and the girl down in Charlotte, wow. pregnant, that kind of thing. And I remember one of my coworkers coming down the hall, Wendy Williams talking to you. I'm like, but you and I don't really talk. Why are you down here right. asking yeah. me that? Yeah. So, yeah. So was there an attraction? Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah there sure was. <laughs> so are you currently involved in a relationship now? And if so, what type of guy are you attracted to? I am single. Um, I've only dated a few people since I've been in Fayetteville. I'm not gonna say they're slim pickings. I'm not gonna say that I'm choosy. <laughs> it just hasn't unfolded. Mm -hmm. um, when I leave here though, I went all the way to Cancun 
met someone there and like we vibe. I don't know what's going on with me here. I know people like, oh, the soldier's there. I I've never dated a soldier. Mm -hmm. And again, I've been here going on like nine years. So right now, mama's open. I ain't gonna say she's available because <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna wait. I don't wanna pull the wrong thing towards uh -huh. myself. But I, I don't have like a, a set type of person that I like, like dark skin, light skin, whatever. I just like people that are gonna treat me well, that are on a good path, mm -hmm. got some sense about themselves, financially stable. Right. Um, just the things that make a person good. So I'm, I'm open. Yeah. Not saying I'm looking, but I'm open. <laughs> I don't wanna put the wrong message. Yeah, y'all heard it, y'all heard it. <laughs> <laughs> So how has being a single mom affected your career and personal life? From a personal level, um, I think I'm handling uh, being a mom really well, but maybe I don't know if it's had some kind of impact. Maybe people choose not to approach me because I am a, a woman that already has a package. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, um, but I don't bring people around my child if I don't feel like it's, it's, it's gonna be leading somewhere. He just doesn't, and particularly with boys, I feel like they get a little more attached to people. Mm -hmm. So for us, it hasn't affected us, not that I know of, but it very well could have. Some people don't want women to have children, but my, I'm a woman of a certain age, more than likely somebody my age is yeah. already gonna have some kids. That's um, true. From a professional standpoint, I've been lucky enough to have a mom that holds me down. My mama didn't start driving until she was 37. Oh man, she started late. Yeah, she did. <laughs> and I was scared for my mom when I went off to college because I was doing all the driving for her. Yeah. Uh, but when I became pregnant, it was uh, snow started coming down mm -hmm. uh, the week that I was supposed to have my child. My mama got herself in the car. She's not a comfortable driver. She don't like driving at night, any of that. She drove from Durham to Charlotte to make sure that she, was, she was present. And she's always been in my son's life. Um, since since he came here, so I've never like had to leave him with someone that I was, you know, might be doubtful about. I've mm -hmm. done some daycare, but he's never. I've just never had the horror stories. Yeah, not having people there available for me mm -hmm. um, since he's been here. So thank God everything is yeah. is working out. And particularly with radio, having to be in nightclubs sometimes and just strange hours. Mm -hmm. uh, been an easy ride. Yeah, it seemed like you balancing it though. Oh yeah. yeah still definitely. here, so that says a lot. And shout out to my mom again, cause um, I don't know what kind of ride it would have been without her. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no doubt. So what advice do you have for someone that wants to work in radio? Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> radio has changed a lot. Now there are a lot of departments that people can work in. So I'm not, I'm going to say, don't just focus on being a radio talent. I'm not going to tell you not to pursue it, but it's not what it used to be. There are less jobs. There's more syndication. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think it's a certain voice that you have to have to be in radio. Sometimes it's just being in the right place at the right time. Like it was for me. I know a guy was uh, in the grocery store talking on the phone and a former supervisor turned around and was like, I like your voice. That's how he fell in the radio. Mm. But the pay is different, it's more work. You're not just gonna get on the radio and be smiley smile all day and walk out the door. You're gonna have other things that you have to do. Used to be numerous people in the building, you copyright, um, just, just a lot of people and it's just downsized so much. So the opportunity is a little bit slimmer. So jokingly I said, don't do it, but really think about it. Yeah. You, it's almost like I want to get my record on the radio at this point, mm -hmm. trying to be on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the same. Wow. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you shared that. Because I think like, let's say if Cumulus was to downsize right now, it's not like I'm going to be able to go out and find a job in 30 days probably. Mm -hmm. it, it could be a long wait trying to get back in. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the it's same. crazy. Yeah. So do you have any advice for people looking to become more involved in the community? There are a lot of organizations already established. And I know this from just being out in the community and from the public service announcements that come into the radio station. I, I really wish people would stop trying to invent the wheel and maybe decide to support somebody that already has the train in motion. You know, join that organization and learn from the, from the ground up. And then maybe consider going out and doing your own thing. Um, 
There are a lot of events here that are, are duplicated, like the back to school programs, the, the school supplies. It's a beautiful thing, but do we need 40 of them every year? And no disrespect to anybody, but just imagine that taking place at Festival Park and all these organizations kind of teaming location. up and just mm -hmm. working together. So that's that's what I would say. Investigate what's already present and, and let people know that you're available and that you're ready to get some work done. So that's that's what I would say. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So lastly, to wrap up the interview, how can people reach you on social media? Okay. Um, I use my name everywhere, Elise Stewart. Um, that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the whole nine. Right now I have my Twitter page on private because I just said I'm going to take a break from there, but you can still request a follow and I'll, I'll let you in. Mm -hmm. I feel like Twitter <laughs> is changing. Like, yeah, the vibe it's definitely is changed a lot over the past, I don't know, like at least four years so far. It's, it's not, not as uh, engaging. Like you mm -hmm. could say, I'm on fire right now. I really wish someone would come and bring me some water. <laughs> and I think Twitter would do just like this. Yeah. Whereas Instagram is a little more uh, engaging. Mm -hmm. Facebook is still there too. And a lot of our listeners will not leave Facebook. But um, yeah, I'm on all the platforms, even Snapchat. Okay. I don't snap a lot, but I'm on <laughs> So thank you for sitting down with us and having us interview you here at 106.9 here in Fayetteville. Make sure that you listen to the radio show. This is a fabulous person here at this radio station here in Fayetteville. So make sure that you listen to this show. Her voice is powerful. And as of right now, her voice is touching me just by hearing the stories that she has given, um, that she's told us to, so y'all can see how, you know, how she is, how she really is, what you. she agrees with, <laughs> what she likes, what she don't like, different scenarios, things she's been in. And a lot of, um, clearing things up too so i'm glad that um you actually sat down with us and we got to talk and how we actually crossed paths and now that we're here actually sitting down talking and getting to know each other more and the people getting to know you more so it's it's as good it's a great opportunity and thank you for sitting with us well i definitely appreciate it and um come again the door is open no doubt about that <laughs>